OAM News Now app is on iOS and Android. And we've got ourselves a considerably calmer day out there after some rough, severe weather. We'll have a look at that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. I'm Chris Warner. Uh, your microphone may not be on. Is it not? It is not. Let's see. Is that better? Well, it takes a second. Let's I don't even there have we go. IFB All right, there okay, we are. There we go. There we there are. There we are. That's it. It's, <laughs> hey, it's almost. Boy, it's almost after, Friday. <laughs> it's almost Friday. And boy, after the last couple oh of my weeks of yes. severe weather, it has just been one hit after another. And thankfully, Mother Nature giving us another little break oh, here. We, we got it. a few oh. days of uh, some calm weather out there. Uh, let's start with a quick look outside uh, from our camera on top of the Cornell Complex in downtown Joplin. Looking pretty good so far. Same from the MoDOT camera, 32nd and range line in Joplin. Skywatch Storm Tracker is clear. And it's going to stay that way. It won't be like yesterday morning where we saw storms eventually develop. It will stay clear. But look at all of these storm reports. All these blue circles are large hail reports. Of course, the orange are wind damage. The green are uh, wind gusts. And then down into uh, Perry and Lawrence counties, a couple of tornado reports. One in Monette. Multiple reports of uh, tornado in the Monette area, including trees down. And then uh, trees down... Um, well, unfortunately, a little bug there's covering it up, but it's all right. We've got another tornado report, though. This one's south of uh, Verona, and I wonder if I can move that box. I can't. I'll fix that box. Don't you worry. Uh, but, yeah, so it, either way, a couple of tornado reports. You saw the, the line of wind damage reports that followed that. Similar to what we saw in Joplin the other day. ton of wind damage reports right along the line. Survey teams will come out. They'll make some assessments. We'll get more information on uh, what transpired with those tornado warnings as they tracked across the southern part of our area. Temperatures, a bit of a mix out there. We've got low to mid 50s. We've got some upper 50s here and there. But either way, not a bad start to the day. Kids getting on the bus. It is going to be clear. It is going to be cool, but it's going to be nice. 53, North Breeze 5 to 10. Well, that bus brings them back home. 74 and sunny, Northeast Breeze 5 to 15. Some occasional gusts upwards of 20 miles an hour. And take a look at this. It is an absolutely beautiful day. Temperatures into the mid 70s across the area. Maybe a couple of upper 70s here and there. Sunny skies. And again, those occasional wind gusts up to 20. We're going to remain calm for the next few days. So we'll take another look at your full forecast talk about the weekend and when our next round of rain arrives here in a few more minutes Elise beautiful day indeed thanks Chris well some uh, property owners in both southwest Missouri and in northeast Oklahoma have to deal with damage left by yesterday afternoon storms in the Monette Missouri area dozens of trees are down and businesses are dealing with power outages as crews repair electric lines some buildings are damaged, including McDonald's and a Walmart, and authorities have closed some roads. Officials say the cleanup could take weeks. The neighboring community of Aurora also had some damage. The storm heavily damaged the home south of Miami, Oklahoma. This is on 130th Road. A couple who lived in the home say they took shelter in a closet and no one was hurt. Family and friends were gathering at the scene to help recover what they could. The storm also heavily damaged this home near Miami, Oklahoma. This is an image from the scene yesterday on 120th Road. At least a couple in uh, one other home on this same road have relatively minor damage. There are those are east of the Dollar General on East Street Southwest. The storm also damaged an outbuilding and uprooted some trees. We don't know of any injuries. Some electric customers in the Joplin area are still dealing with power outages caused by Monday's storm. 
Liberty Utilities Facebook page reports that during the height of the storm, more than 17,000 customers did not have power. According to Liberty Utilities outage map, 102 customers were still experiencing outages as of 4 p.m. yesterday. A local restaurant in one of the outage areas says their power returned, but not in the time to save some ingredients. Well, the power uh, had returned last night around 7 p.m. So everything seemed to be uh, back on and working. Uh, unfortunately, we had to uh, clean up before we open and all that. We lost some food and stuff, but uh, that's things like that happen. Izeka says this is the first time they lost power at their Duquesne location. With severe weather affecting our area throughout the week, administrators in Carthage and Joplin are opening up and going more in depth about the storm shelters provided by the districts. KOM's Anthony Saviello has more. When storms roll through our area like the ones we experienced earlier this week, it's important to know where your safe place is and to have a plan. For many people in our area, their safe place is our schools. We are excited to be able to offer this to our community and we think it's a great service. Um, just this week alone, we had over 306 community members um, utilize our safe rooms and, and our community shelters. So we're proud of that and we're happy for that. Dr. Holly Goodnight says she understands the importance of having community storm shelters available, especially after storms like the one our area experienced on Monday. But what is the basis for the shelters to be open? The safe room is open when the National Weather Service issues a tornado warning or a severe weather event with the excess of 75 mile an hour winds. That policy is similar to the Joplin School District. However, the Joplin system is automated and activates in three different instances. If a tornado warning is issued, um, the second is if the sirens, um, if the city of Joplin uh, turned on the sirens, then we will automatically initiate all of our safe rooms to open up just like we did Friday. Um, and then the third is if we are watching the weather closely, um, I'm in constant communication with our emergency manager and our school safety uh, coordinator. So we're always on the phone talking. Um, if we think there is a tornado in any neighboring county um, or a severe thunderstorm to a point where it could possibly turn into a tornado in neighboring county, we will automatically open our safe rooms at that point as well. The Joplin School District followed that policy Monday night when a tornado warning was issued in Cherokee County and Jasper County. Both administrators say the plans they have in place are the best plans for the safety of the community. From the research we've done since 2014, since we've opened them, um, between the, the usage and the, and the supervision of them and, and, this, and the number of times they've been utilized um, and, and like I said, the research we've done, we felt that this is the best plan. But I can tell you on the days that there are weather events that are predicted by the weather service that we, we're on the phone with our emergency managers, we're on the phone with local our other school districts in our area. Reporting in Jasper County, Anthony Saviello, KOAM News. The Webb City School District also released a statement saying they will open its community shelter before the outdoor warning sirens are sounded. This will occur when Webb City is in the projected path of a National Weather Service issued tornado warning or severe weather event with life threatening winds. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOAM Morning News. A national champion archer from Sarcoxy makes her college commitment. Plus, the King and Queen of England hosts the first garden party of the year at Buckingham Palace. And we have a nice and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. I'm engaged and I'm getting married next April. Well, we're getting towards the final days of the 2023-24 academic year for our local high schools. Yesterday, a few more student athletes signed letters of intent to advance their careers to the collegiate levels. Sarcoxie High School senior Alyssa Willis signs with Missouri Valley College yesterday afternoon. She has a scholarship to continue her archery career there. Willis, who has won state, national, and world championship trophies in her time at Sarcoxie, is excited to have her archery career give her an opportunity like this. It's felt pretty good because I feel like over the years I haven't noticed much of a like payoff other than winning obviously, but like 
in the grand scheme of things, this is going to make so much more of a difference than anything else I've ever won. So this is going to be a huge change, especially with new coaches and just new faces. It'll be great. Over in Kansas, a couple hours later at Frontenac High School yesterday afternoon, two Raider dancers signed letters of intent to continue their careers at Pitt State. Emma Eckstein and Anne Marie Martin will both join the PSU dance team next year. The future gorillas are both excited about this new opportunity. It's definitely been really exciting leading up to this point. You know, I've danced basically my whole life, so leading up to this, really a big dream making the team, and when I did, I was super excited, and today just made it even more real. I decided I was going to try out like a month ago, um, and I was like, oh, you know, you never know if you're going to make it, but um, this is, next step is really exciting for me because I'm glad I just get to continue my dance journey and continue working in dance. Over to junior college softball, NEO begins postseason play at the Region 2 tournament. The Lady Norths lose a close one, 5-4 at Rose State College. This is a double elimination tournament, so NEO season isn't over yet, but the Lady Norths are down to their last life. They play again tonight at 6.30. Over in Major League Baseball, the Royals finished their homestand last night against the Brewers, trying to get the series win in what will be their last home game for the next nine days. Fifth inning, Royals lead 2-1. to one. Kyle Isbell grounds it down to the first baseline. Gary Sanchez makes the diving stop and gets back to the bag for the out. Nice heads-up play by Sanchez. Keeps the Royals from adding to their lead. So we go to the seventh inning. Kansas City's lead is now 3-1. to one. Sanchez at the plate. Sends the Nick Anderson pitch deep the other way for the solo homer, his fifth of the year. Brewers are within one run. Three batters later, same score. Bryce Turang lines one the other way. MJ Melendez comes up with it and fires it home. Oliver Dunn out at the plate. There's that replay there on that play. It's a great throw by Melendez to get done. Nick Anderson loving it. Royals still lead 3-2. Now to the eighth inning, same score. Bobby Witt Jr. is going to crush this pitch to deep left center. His fifth home run of the year. Brewers fan makes the catch. He's not too happy about it. Witt Jr. goes 2-3 for three with an RBI. Royals win 6-4. to four. Well, Still to come, the CDC announced its regulations for bringing dogs into the United States. Plus... We'll have another look at that considerably calmer forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Greg Kelly, Vice President of Operations with Phoenix Home Care here. If you are too cheap, don't settle for less. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 517 on this Thursday morning. Live look from Mark Hammer on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. Clear skies out there starting to get just a wee bit of daylight ahead of sunrise here. MoDOT camera 30 second in range line also looking pretty good this morning and same from the KDOT camera on 69 just south of Pittsburgh. A much calmer start to the day out there. Our camera 7th in range line also a calm start here. 52 in Joplin. Calm breeze as well. Dew points a little lower. Humidity is up there a bit, but otherwise it is not a bad start out there. Temperatures around the region. Again, we've got a bit of a mixed bag out there. 50s all across the area, but anywhere from the low 50s. Oh, no, save. Change that. 49 in the shade. Now is the cool spot out there this morning, but the rest of us low, mid, and upper 50s. As we get our day started, it is going to be sunny. It is going to be relatively calm out there. Again, we'll have a northeast breeze occasionally gusting upwards of uh, close to 20 miles an hour. We'll be about 71 by 11 o'clock this morning. Heading into the afternoon, it is sunny. And it is nice, right about where we're supposed to be as we go right around the mid-70s. And again, maybe some upper 70s here and there. So not a bad day at all. And boy, we absolutely need the break. And we have had, uh, I think Doug mentioned yesterday, in the last 12 days, we've had uh, more than six of those or about six of those with severe weather events in the area. So we need an opportunity to calm down, clear out, and clean up. I did not change that icon. I apologize. That's supposed to be just sunshine, so don't worry about that. Ignore the thunderstorms. Pay more attention to the sunshine there. Clear skies through the evening and into the overnight hours. We'll fall back again. Upper 40s, low 50s across the area. Now, we are going to be a little bit cooler as we head into uh, our Friday, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Next week, though, we mentioned we have more rain chances on the way. Yeah, we've got more thunderstorm chances. Now, at this point, we don't have any areas highlighted for severe weather. There's nothing that's standing out next week 
uh, this far out that says, oh, hey, you know, this is something we're going to have to watch. But reading the latest discussions, a uh, couple of strong storms here there next week are possible. So we'll keep an eye on everything for you. But by Monday, we're looking at showers and thunderstorms across the area. We're going to spend most of our Monday uh, with thunderstorm coverage out there. Then we'll get another break on Tuesday. Skies will begin to clear out. And then by late Tuesday and into early Wednesday, We'll get another round of showers and thunderstorms out there. So as we get our Wednesday morning underway, showers, storms across the area, and those will be scattered throughout the day on Wednesday for us. And then we go into our Thursday, and you guessed it, more showers and thunderstorms out there as well. Again, tomorrow a little cooler, pinch below average for some of us, low 70s. Then we start to warm back up, upper 70s Saturday and Sunday, maybe an evening shower on Sunday. Then we have those thunderstorm chances Monday. Tuesday looks pretty good. And then we we got more thunderstorm chances Wednesday and Thursday, and then we're looking to clear out by next weekend. Temperatures warmer, though, into the low 80s by next Saturday. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more right after this. For quality exteriors, your area's plot. We are. We are Midwest Hearing Aids. Topping Health Watch this morning, the CDC announces yesterday an update to its regulations for bringing dogs into the United States. This is an effort by the CDC to cut down and prevent rabies in the U.S. The agency will require all dogs, including service canines, coming into the country to appear healthy upon arrival. Dogs must also be at least six months old, microchipped, and have a CDC dog import form filled out online two to ten days before arrival. Officials add that more requirements may apply based on where the dog has traveled or where they had been vaccinated. The new rules will go into effect starting on August 1st. A new study suggests flame retardants in car seat foam may increase exposure to chemicals that may cause cancer. The study was published Tuesday and in the Environmental Science and Technology. Researchers tested air samples from inside the cabins of cars with model years between 2015 and 2022. In addition to finding potential carcinogens in the air, they also found the chemical levels were higher in summer. That's because warmer temperatures increase the amount of chemicals released from the seat foam into the air. Due to the potential health risk, the researchers say the government should prohibit the use of flame retardants in cars. The cycle of addiction and homelessness can be a brutal one to break. And in Reno, Nevada, there is a new program called GRIT that focuses on getting these people back on their feet while burning a lot of calories and developing muscles. Shelby Sheehan reports. Bum, bum, bum. Every Saturday, there's an energy that fills the air at Redirect Athletics. There's punching and jabbing and kicking, but the fight is about way more than just martial arts. The GRIT program is a program designed to reintegrate people from treatment or from the streets back into the community by using exercise, volunteering, and a little bit of wellness. Addiction recovery and homeless advocate Grant Denton has been running the GRIT program since January. He picks up men and women at local recovery shelters in a van and brings them to the gym. They learn about boxing and the importance of self-care in recovery. For those who are getting sober and off the streets, it's been a life changer. At 29 years old, I'm tired of messing up. You know what I mean? And this is very important for me. This is the best thing I could have done in my life is joining this program. On this day, Brandon Hall is four months, six days sober. He says he's fighting for his health and his family, a family that now includes a seven-month-old daughter. Oh, man, um, I, I love it. I love it. it it's uh, It gives us a chance in our Crossroads community to really really let out aggression and you know get in shape and get back to the community and stuff like that man it, it, it's been a blast it's about discipline it's about coming to the gym when you don't want to come to the gym it's about pushing yourself further than you would than you would originally go the grit program also goes into local treatment centers during the week but on the weekend after the gym time there's some community cleanup to do this is one of the most important parts of the program is that we go out to the homeless camps on the streets where a lot of these folks have came from and we help pick up trash out there and we engage with the people on the streets and we send a message of recovery it makes me feel good because uh, I used to be out there, you know, two and a half years under Sutro Bridge. Yeah, that's a long time. As he's picking up trash and cleaning the community, Cody McIntosh can't help but think about the position he's in now. Clean, 
becoming healthy, and feeling hope for a better future. It, it feels pretty good. I've never worked so hard in my life for something that I love so much, you know? The sweat, the discipline, the endorphins. All new feelings for most of these participants, but they are adding up to a path of progress for those willing to work. I think it's important that the community focuses on growing this group. We have a huge potential in this group um, that if given the right support can become huge leaders in this community. Silver Summit Health Plan has committed to paying for the first year of the Grit Reno program. Redirect Fitness has also partnered with them to give them a facility to work out in. Denton says the program is open to anyone in the community working towards sobriety. Now to look at some of today's top health stories, you're watching the KOAM Morning News. And we've got ourselves a much calmer out day out there. The Skywatch Storm Tracker is clear. It will remain that way for the next few days. We'll have another look at your forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Three A4 inhibitors. Allergic reactions to Ubrelvi can happen. Most common side effects were nausea and sleepiness. Ask about Ubrelvi. Right now at 5.30, a Web City firefighter hangs up his helmet after 40 years of service. And we've got a calm start for us on our Thursday morning across the area. It's going to stay that way too, at least for the next few days. We'll have a look at that forecast. Get you out the door. Coming up. Plus, the Carthage Chamber of Car Commerce hosts an event to celebrate and empower women. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It's 530. I'm Elise Snowy. I'm Chris Warner. It is Thursday in the four yes. states. And I look, it's been a long week. So yes, that, that, that little slip up, I make plenty of them. So I'm not making <laughs> fun of Elise. But when you said the Carthage Chamber of Karma, you know, honestly. <laughs> is that what I said? Actually? Just about. I, that's why I'm like, Oops. you know, actually, maybe each community does need a Chamber of com Karma. No, I can't. I don't know it. about that. See, you can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it has been a long couple of weeks in the four states. I know you folks at home, a yes. uh, number of you still without power. You may be streaming us right now if you can. It's been rough, yes. but we're going to get a break out there and uh, looking forward to that much needed break. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, outside. See, I don't even know where we are, or what I'm doing right now. Uh, let's look outside. This is the Modoc camera, 32nd in range line in Joplin, looking fairly good this morning. And as we take a look at the Skywatch storm tracker, nothing. Now, yesterday, of course, we started the day with nothing and we saw storms develop, but that will not be the case today. However, take a look at the last round of storm reports out there. All of these blue circles are large hail reports. We've got wind damage and tornado reports around the Miami area. We also had a couple of tornado port reports, one in Monette, and then we had another one um, south of Verona at Farm Road 5000 and Farm Road 1150 out there. And of course, uh, tornado damage reports or damage reports south of Miami National Weather Service survey crews not getting a break. They'll be out once again uh, taking a look at the damage across the area. Temperatures outside right now looking pretty good. We got a mixed bag out there. New Yorkshire was a little cooler a minute ago, but we're all back into the 50s. But we range anywhere from 50 upwards of uh, the mid 50s out there and even up to 57 in J. Kids getting on the bus this morning. 53 north breeze around 5 to 10 miles an hour and we'll have clear skies and these clear skies continue into the afternoon 74 when the bus brings them home northeast breeze 5 to 15 we could see some occasional gusts upwards of 20 miles an hour as we head through the rest of the day again it's a beautiful day sunny skies a bit breezy at times temperatures right around the mid 70s so not a bad day at all we'll tell you how long the nice weather is going to last and when our next round of rain arrives in the full forecast and that's coming up here in just a few more minutes. Elise? And we'll see you soon. Well, after more than 40 years serving the community, a Web City firefighter will retire next week. KOAM's Fernanda Silva spoke with him. Soon, Jackie Clark's picture will leave this wall where the current crew is featured and will go to this one next to other fellow retired firefighters. It's uh, scary and excited at the same time. Uh, it's like uh, if anything's going to happen, usually happens the last few days. Clark doesn't have too many reasons to be superstitious. His very first day of work was a Friday the 13th, but even though some bad memories still haunt him. And she's conscious, really bad, bad shape. And uh, her screaming my name telling me not to let her die. 
I occasionally still hear that in the middle of the night. He had a successful, beautiful career. Clark is the third longest serving firefighter in the history of the department. He has done it all, from delivering babies to saving lives and houses. Ears also filled with some great memories. I love the school tours. See, on my shift, uh, the kids come in, we'll set up at one of the hoses, uh, inch and three-quarter line, and let them spray water. Those days were especially fun for Clark's daughter. You got to be the cool kid because your dad's spraying the water hose. His retirement brings mixed feelings. I know how much my dad loves to be a fireman, and that's like such a huge part of his identity. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to turn loose. Uh, I won't have my radio. Uh, I won't get, I get all the 911 alerts in the city on my phone, well, that'll go away. But the Webb City Fire Department will we still hear from him. When we run through the neighborhood, uh, all the dogs start howling. <laughs> well, I'm going to be the one sitting on the porch when the fire truck goes by howling. <laughs> yeah. In Webb City, Fernanda Silva, KOEM News. Clark says he now hopes to enjoy his cars, travel with his wife, and work on some honeydews. The Carthage Chamber of Commerce held their annual Empowering Women in Business Conference yesterday. More than 100 women from all over the area took part. The event featured National Power Coaching and author Anita Brooks. Participants also took the opportunity to learn lessons from a panel discussion on mother-daughter business partners. By listening to the women here in town and those that attend these events and what they would like to hear and can leave feeling empowered, we go out and we seek those individuals that can bring that to the table. The conference marked this second year for the event. Yesterday was National Ride Your Bike to School Day and students who are a part of the Cecil Floyd Bike Bus Group in Joplin had the opportunity to commemorate the day while celebrating their accomplishment of reaching over 2,000 miles ridden right to the school this academic year. Friends and family of the riders were encouraged to bring cowbells and signs to cheer them on. It's, it's very important. Um, when the kids are in the backseat of a car, they don't learn those things. They don't really they're just watching out the window or they're playing on their iPads or something. They're not paying attention to the ways of the road. And I think it's important to teach them early when they're riding to follow the traffic laws so they understand how to be safe, what's going on around them, listening, looking, looking out for each other as well. All of the kids who participated received medals for their accomplishments. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. TikTok is fighting back on a potential nationwide ban of its popular video sharing app. Plus, the Biden administration is facing pressure to do more to stabilize the situation in Haiti. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. Well, topping World Watch, TikTok is fighting back on a potential nationwide ban of its popular video sharing app. The Chinese-owned company suing on the grounds of a new law requiring it to change ownership violates free speech rights. Matt Finn has the story. So of course they don't want to sell TikTok, but they should be forced to. Strong reactions on Capitol Hill after Chinese-owned TikTok files a federal lawsuit challenging a new law that would ban the popular app unless it's sold to an approved buyer. The law, which stems from national security concerns, goes into effect in nine months. But the suit argues the law violates the First Amendment rights of TikTok users and is unconstitutional. There's no constitutional right to own property when it is against the national security interests or other legal interests of the United States of America. In court filings, TikTok parent company ByteDance writes, for the first time in history, Congress has enacted a law that subjects a single named speech platform to a permanent nationwide ban and bars every American from participating in a unique online community. Lawmakers, however, are calling out the hypocrisy. They're trying to, you know, grab their pearls acting like this, this is some kind of unconstitutional thing when this is actually very common kinds of business kinds of um, issue that, that we see just in uh, China. 
While TikTok does try to distance itself from national security concerns by highlighting its global investors, in the lawsuit it admits China does have control over what TikTok does, writing the Chinese government has made clear that it would not permit a divestment. This case could make its way all the way to the Supreme Court, and if TikTok loses, it says it would be forced to shut down operations next year. The King and Queen of England hosts the first garden party of the year at Buckingham Palace yesterday. King Charles and Queen Camilla joining Princess Anne, Prince Edward, and the Duchess of Edinburgh at the event. The party coinciding with the attendance of Prince Harry at the Invictus Games 10th anniversary service in London. A spokesperson for the royal family says the Duke of Sussex won't see his father during the visit. King Charles III returned to his official duties last week. Thousands of Palestinians rushed to flee Rafa following Israel's ground operation in the city's eastern suburbs. Residents were packing their belongings and heading out of town yesterday. Many headed for Muwasi, a coastal area designated as a safe zone by the Israeli military. The United Nations Palestinian Refugee Agency estimates more than 450,000 Palestinians are living there currently, mostly in tents. Residents say basic food and essential items have become unaffordable there as a result. Currently, more than half of Gaza's population occupies Rafa. The Biden administration is facing pressure from some lawmakers to do more to stabilize the situation in Haiti. Thousands of people have fled the capital of Port-au-Prince as gang violence increases. Griff Jenkins has more. After months of gang violence in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, some Democratic lawmakers argue Washington is not doing enough to address the growing crisis. If we truly believe that black lives matter, then that must include Haitian lives. The Biden administration has been under increased pressure from human rights organizations to rethink its treatment of Haitians seeking asylum in the U.S. On Wednesday, members of the House Haiti Caucus called for the U.S. to immediately pause deportations to the island, release current detainees, and extend Haiti's temporary protected status that would allow more Haitian migrants already living in the U.S. to remain here. Haiti has slowly been slipping into chaos. The security situation has deteriorated amid this political crisis, which has caused a wider deterioration in Port-au-Prince but the White House has said its approach is to get Haiti on the path to democracy. This week, the U.S. Southern Command announced that civilian contractors have flown to the island to secure the airport in Port-au-Prince. It comes ahead of the expected deployment of a multinational peacekeeping mission to stop the violence. Six other countries are taking part in those efforts, which will be led by Kenya. We have, I think for operational security reasons, not wanted to... to a fix a public date to it, but it's something that we're working to um, to um, to make happen as soon as possible. According to the UN, more than 95,000 people have left Port-au-Prince since early March. That's a look at some headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. Get Flex Cork at FlexSealProducts.com. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 546 now on this Thursday morning. Taking a live look from our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. Beautiful start to the day. We've got clear skies. The sun is beginning to rise and it is obviously considerably calmer. Modoc camera 30 second and range line also looking pretty good this morning as we get our day underway. Same from the KDOT camera on 69 just south of Pittsburgh at East 520th Avenue and our camera 7th and range line. Also a fantastic view. 52 in Joplin. The wind for now is calm out there and we have clear skies. Clear skies across the area. Temperatures for most of us hanging out in the 50s. But as you can see, uh, Carthage now the cold spot at 49. Earlier it was Neotache. The rest of us in the 50s, but we got a wide variety. We've got 50 all the way from 50 up to about 56 degrees out there. So a bit of a spread on those temperatures. We get our morning started, sunny skies, and we'll eventually make it right about 71 by 11 o'clock this morning. And as we head into the afternoon, we'll hold on to those sunny skies. They remain clear. We remain mild, about average out there, right around the mid 70s for those highs, maybe even a couple of upper 70s. Heading into the evening clear skies this is the easiest forecast i've put together in the last couple of weeks clear skies 
nice temperatures back down in the low 50s, maybe some upper 40s here and there like we're seeing this morning just some brief upper 40s a little bit on the chilly side however thunderstorm chances are going to make an appearance again as we head into the next work week so here we are about noon on monday thunderstorms across the area and we'll deal with thunderstorms most of our monday now the good news is at this time we don't have any areas highlighted this far out for severe weather. The last couple of weeks, we've seen that where even several days out, the severe weather events been very obvious and we've had areas highlighted several days out. We do not have that, but I will tell you there's discussion that we could see some strong potentially severe storms next week. But right now, those those chances of strong to severe thunderstorms are relatively low, but we are in severe weather season. They're not zero at this point, but we're looking better. There's at this point looking at some thunderstorms out there, but we'll keep an eye on the forecast trends. Keep an eye on these thunderstorms. And again, they'll stick with us for the majority of our Monday and we'll go into Tuesday. Tuesday looks pretty good. Maybe a cloud or two here or there. Otherwise, not a bad day. And then as we had late Tuesday and early Wednesday morning, we get our Wednesday underway. More showers and thunderstorms across the area and these will stick with us again for the majority of our Wednesday. Now they'll be scattered. Remember what we've talked about with the future track. It's not saying there's going to be a blanket of rain out here showing where the rain chances where rain could be where thunderstorms could be in these highlighted areas. Wednesday looks to be a little bit on the scattered side. Same for Thursday, but those chances are a little bit better for a little more organized, a little more widespread thunderstorm and shower activity out there. And again, that'll stick with us through our Thursday. Tomorrow, a little bit below normal for some of us, low 70s, and then we warm back up into the weekend into the upper 70s maybe a stray shower or two on a Sunday evening thunderstorms Monday nice on Tuesday more thunderstorms next Wednesday and Thursday and then we'll clear out and warm up heading into next weekend that's check your forecast we're back with more right after this honoring the women who shaped our lives A mom and her two daughters all following the same career path. That's also a flight path. All three are flight attendants for Southwest Airlines. And as Alexis Dominguez learned, the same career choice allows for a much closer relationship. I go to San Francisco tomorrow. In uniform at Sky Harbor Airport. We need to pick up another trip. It may not be noticeable at first, but these two flight attendants are sisters. So me and my sister started at the same time. Um, we started in customer service and support, and we were in the same class there, and then we transferred over to being a flight attendant. Their inspiration is their mom. Now I'm a little bit more seasoned. Campbell is a 17-year veteran flight attendant with Southwest Airlines. It was a dream she had back in high school, but didn't chase until 2007. We decided to wait till the girls got a little bit older. And I think they were 11 and 12 when I be finally became a flight attendant. I think what inspired me to be a flight attendant was um, watching my mother become one. The same year that Chantel and Charnell Johnson began their new careers, they all took to the sky together. It does give you a sense of pride. You, you, you think about like when they were younger and you know, what you thought they were going to do, and now they're doing the same thing as you. Since then, they have overlapped schedules at least three times, working holidays together in some fashion, including New Year's and Christmas. That way we're not totally missing the holidays with each other. You feel a little alone on the holidays. Stuff is closed, and you're away from your family, but when you fly with your family, it makes it so much easier being away from home, being away from your kids and family. Their most recent shift altogether was about a week and a half ago. We went to New Orleans together on a quick trip and we had the time of our life. We went to Bourbon Street. We definitely made a trip out of it. We picked it up so that we could explore and get some new food, try something different. Their work allows them to have a stronger bond on the ground too. We have so much fun together and just laugh the entire time and the passengers love it as well. It's so much fun. It's not work when you're working with family. So we have a great time. We get to go out and explore new cities together. All three have more than 30 years of combined experience as Southwest Airlines flight attendants. We'll be right back. Are you tired of feeling cramped in your current RV? Imagine having more room to see the movies at Second Sunday Cinema. Well, buying concert tickets online just got a whole lot easier for people in Minnesota. 
thanks to the so-called Taylor Swift bill. The bill signed into law on Tuesday by Governor Tim Walz requires ticket sellers to show all fees up front and prevent resellers from distributing more than one copy of a ticket. The signed House file 1989, a reference to Swift's birth year, comes after a state lawmaker was not able to buy tickets to see Swift's perform in Minneapolis last year. Thousands of people were stuck in Ticketmaster's queue system after it crashed. Fans, scalpers and bots all try to buy ticketers for Swift's era's tour. And Starbucks brings boba to its summer drink lineup. The coffee chain announced its summer menu on Tuesday, featuring three new fruity boba drinks. With hues of bright blue, the new summer berry drinks have hints of blueberry, blackberry, and raspberry boba pearls. The summer berry drink comes as a refresher mixed with either water, lemonade, or coconut milk. The new summer drinks will only be on the menu for a limited time. And while it's not going to be excessively warm today, nice day for a summer drink, maybe sitting out on the porch or unfortunately for some of you, you're going to need some water, something to keep you going as you clean up from the storms we've had over the past couple of weeks. But at least today you can get that opportunity to do that. Sunny skies out there, 71 by 11 o'clock this morning. Northeast winds occasionally gusting upwards of 20 miles an hour. Sunny through the day, temperatures right about average as we head for the mid 70s out there. As we head to, to the evening hours, again, clear skies skies out there through the evening, clear skies overnight, a little bit on the cool side, upper 50s and maybe some low 40s here and there. As we headed to our Friday, we're actually going to be a little cooler. We're looking at low 70s and then we warm up heading into the weekend, going into the upper 70s, maybe a stray shower or two on Sunday. Thunderstorm chances on Monday. At this point, we don't see anything standing out as severe, but of course, it's still severe weather season, so we'll keep a close eye on those storm chances. Pretty decent day on Tuesday, more scattered thunderstorms Wednesday and Thursday. Better chances on Thursday and again nothing out there screaming severe at this point, but we'll keep an eye on those storms for you. We'll clear out next Friday as well and have a pretty decent Saturday next weekend as we go into the low 80s. That's us check of your forecast. We've got a whole nother hour of the KOAM morning news coming up right after this.